Okay, so with complex numbers, we can show them geometrically in what's called an Argand diagram. The way we do that is that we consider this as the real axis and this as the imaginary axis. And I treat this as x and this as y. So I go over 5 and I go up 12. And this here is that particular, this is representative of that point, the first point. 5 plus 12 i. Z2 will be similar, but it'll go negative 2 up 5, and that's negative 2 plus 5 i. And if I draw that, I can see that it is this here. And so now, if I want to add these two together, and I can quickly do that and go 5 minus 2 is 3. And then 5 plus 12 is 17i. If I draw that 3, 17 is right about there. It's the same idea as taking this, oh, this number and putting it here. And so this, if I jump ahead down to this question, complex numbers are synonymous with vectors. If I consider this a vector and that a vector, I can add the vectors together as such, and I can see, as like vectors adding up, complex numbers do the same thing. It also works with subtraction, which you can try yourself, but complex numbers you can see that they work like vectors. And then finally, the modulus of Z1, how is this represented on the graph? Well, if I want to find the modulus of that, it's going to be Z1 modulus is simply 5 squared plus 12 squared square rooted, which is 25 plus 144, which I know to be 13. And that here represents the length of that well, vector or the line connecting the origin to the point. And that's what's called an Argand diagram. And so if I want to graph these complex numbers, z modulus is 3, well, that means I'm going 3 away from the origin everywhere. And so I end up getting this particular shape here on this graph here. But be careful, this here is not squared up. If it was squared up, it would be a perfect circle. And if I want less than or equal to 3, that means it's a filled-in circle, is what this is shown on the complex numbers.